who makes the world's greatest hamburgers? Bud Rucker. Let's look back at some of the most popular chain restaurants that have vanished across America. Kenny Rogers Roasters. Check it out. Wow, Kenny Rogers Roasters finally open. Like another restaurant chain on our list, Kenny Rogers Roasters was made into a pop culture icon after being mentioned in a TV episode. This time it was the ever popular sitcom Seinfeld. Not fast food good food quickly. The episode revolved around a neon sign from a Kenny Rogers location being so bright that it prevented one of the characters from sleeping. In real life, though, the restaurant chain needed no help with marketing and was expanding quickly throughout the United States and even into the rest of the world. Kenny Rogers Roasters was unique in that the menu focused on whole roasted chickens, but eventually expanded to include ribs, turkey, as well as other various sides and dishes. By 1998, the once thriving restaurant chain was struggling and entered Chapter 11 bankruptcy before being sold to Nathan's Famous Inc. for a measly one and a quarter million dollars. Shut up and take my money! Due to problems encountered during the restructuring of the company, Kenny Rogers Roasters was forced to close many of their locations around the globe, and by 1999 had just 40 locations remaining in the United States. Finally, in late 2011, the last U.S.-based Kenny Rogers had closed with some of the menu items continuing to live on at some Nathan's Hot Dog restaurants. Despite the restaurant chain losing all of their locations in the U.S., the brand still continues to operate in Asia after being sold to the Burjaya Group. Even though the Kenny Rogers Roasters may be gone from the U.S. market, you can always get a taste of the restaurant by re-watching the classic episode of Seinfeld or even visiting a handful of Nathan's locations that still offer some Kenny Rogers menu items. White Tower Nobody likes a copycat. The name is not only a poor copy of an already existing restaurant chain, but being founded just four years after White Castle, White Tower hamburgers copied everything from their competitor. The buildings had the same fortress-looking design, the menu was extremely similar, and their sliders even looked just like those of White Castle. They chose an all-white interior for their buildings to display the cleanliness of their restaurant, and even had some of their waitresses dressed as nurses for some odd reason. The chain became extremely successful and expanded operations to many states across the eastern U.S. However, just three years after their initial opening, White Tower was facing a lawsuit from none other than White Castle. The lawsuit ended with White Tower being forced to change its use of these similar style buildings, slogans, and even their name. Change everything. After changing hands, names, and investment companies, the group that owned White Tower Burgers has completely removed themselves from the restaurant business and now operates in a completely different sector. Fuddruckers your mom says, hey, Troy, you're ruining Fuddruckers for everyone. One of the most confusing and oddest names ever given to a chain restaurant has to be Fuddruckers. The name, just like their delicious burgers, can be a mouthful for some curious diners. Overall, though, Fuddruckers was a great family-oriented restaurant chain that was famous for their burgers and the ability to customize said burgers. They claim to have the world's greatest hamburger and pride themselves on the fact that they use fresh beef that has no fillers or additives. Many people would consider Fuddruckers to be a truly classic American restaurant chain, and people have flocked to their neighborhood location for many years. The kids do love Fuddruckers. Yeah, getting the design any burger you want? Unfortunately for Fuddruckers, they have had some issues regarding their parent company, Luby's Inc., who seem to be steadily running out of money. While there are a handful of Fuddruckers that have been franchised out to local owners, the majority of the locations have been closed, sold off, or are in the process of closing. It's always sad to see one of your favorite restaurants close. Fortunately for some lucky diners, it is still possible to get your Fuddruckers fix. If you live near a franchised location in the South and Southwestern United States, consider yourself lucky. Sweet Tomatoes You say tomato, tomato, I say tomato, tomato. 
It really is surprising to hear that Sweet Tomatoes has gone out of business. Who doesn't love a good all-you-can-eat buffet? Sweet Tomatoes even positioned themselves as a healthy alternative to the other various buffet-style restaurants with a truly massive salad bar, although they did offer other not-so-healthy entrees like fried chicken, pasta, and pizza, the real focus was always on their salad bar, which offered a wide variety of vegetables and fixings to create a truly unique and nutrient-packed dish. Salad, trying to eat healthy. While it should come as no surprise to anyone that the pandemic dealt a hard hit to the restaurant industry, it is still very surprising to see it take out such a well-known and established chain like Sweet Tomatoes. While other restaurants had the luxury of switching to takeout style dining, this proved to be a lot more difficult for a restaurant chain whose whole identity was based on providing a buffet-style experience. What was supposed to be a temporary shutdown unfortunately turned into a permanent one after the chain started to lose over $1 million per week due to their restaurants having to close their doors. We will all have fond memories of Sweet Tomatoes skipping over the enormous salad bar and heading directly to the pizzas and junk food, only to heavily regret this decision by the end of our meals. Burger Chef Have a burger, Dad? Here you go! Burger Chef was truly an innovative restaurant chain. Although many people today may not recognize the name, Burger Chef was a direct competitor to McDonald's and once had thousands of restaurants across the United States at one point. The most amazing thing about Burger Chef is that they were the true creator of the Happy Meal, something that is synonymous with McDonald's nowadays. So what happened to Burger Chef? Did something good happen? In the end, they grew too quickly. Even with all their success, expanding to thousands of locations in a short amount of time can be a very dangerous move. Eventually, Burger Chef was bought out by the Hardee's group and no longer has any brick-and-mortar locations. It's interesting to imagine a world where the roles between McDonald's and Burger Chef were reversed. If McDonald's had expanded too fast way back when, would Burger Chef have taken its place as one of the most famous fast food chains across the world? Lubies. I will take a free breakfast buffet anytime, anyplace. To follow up the loss of our beloved Fuddruckers, we must look a bit deeper into the parent company, Lubies Inc. Their flagship restaurant chain, Lubies, was another buffet-style American classic. Luby's was a very popular restaurant among all ages, but it was especially a huge hit with the older crowd. Their cafeteria-style approach to dining was extremely affordable, had a variety of culinary options, and offered a warm and inviting atmosphere. You're always welcome here. Luby's locations would commonly be found throughout various shopping malls across the country, where hungry shoppers would stop in for a home-style meal after a long day of shopping. Like many of the other cafeteria and buffet-style restaurant chains across the nation, Luby's was hit hard by the effects of the pandemic. Luby's Inc. announced late in 2020 that they would be liquidating and selling off all of their Luby's restaurants. This would come as a huge surprise to some loyal customers as the chain had a large and almost cult-like following across the U.S. Meatheads Burger and Fries I'll bring him a burger and some regular fries. Although it's a newer restaurant chain compared to many others on this list, the demand for Meathead's burgers was strong and the lines were consistently out the door. Offering delicious burgers, fries, shakes, and other sandwiches, Meathead's was a favorite among many of the Chicago suburbs that surrounded the city. What made Meathead's stand out amongst the other countless burger chains was the ability to customize your burgers in a mind-blowing amount of ways. Offering a handful of signature sauces, seasonings, and a wide variety of both free and premium toppings, Meatheads allowed its customers to make some truly unique creations. This is a tasty burger. Meatheads was also one of the restaurant chains to offer access to Coca-Cola freestyle machines. These soft drink dispensers allow you to choose from an extremely large variety of beverages and open up the option for users to create their own unique 
unique mixes. Like so many other restaurant chains, Meatheads was heavily affected by the pandemic. Unlike many other restaurants, though, Meatheads also struggled with mismanagement during their rather short lifespan. Paired with a steep drop in sales, Meatheads' parent company, Crave Brands, is facing bankruptcy proceedings. Fennigans. Have you ever been to Bennigan's, mister? Made into a pop culture classic due to its appearance in an episode of South Park, Bennigan's has been struggling for years and has been sold multiple times during the course of their existence. Bennigan's is a restaurant that is similar in a lot of ways to the likes of TGI Fridays, Chili's, and Applebee's. Unfortunately for Bennigan's, the chain never seemed to acquire the same level of success that the others achieved. You have failed. After constantly changing hands through various companies over the years, Bennigan's finally filed for bankruptcy in 2008. Even though the chain has almost completely disappeared, we can always look back on the episode of South Park that revolved around one of the characters' love and excitement for a trip to Bennigan's. Chi Chi's. We went to Chi Chi's <laughs> and danced the night away. The room completely disappeared. Chi Chi's is a very interesting restaurant chain in that it still has locations in Belgium, Kuwait, and the United Arab Emirates, but exited the US and Canadian markets in 2004. Chi Chi's is a Mexican restaurant chain that was co-founded by a former Green Bay Packers player, Max McGee. Starting in 1975, Chi Chi's grew to over 200 locations and seemed to have a bright future ahead of its constant expansion. However, due to increased competition from other Hispanic fast food chains, Chi Chi's started to struggle and they were forced to start closing some of their locations. In 2002, there were less than 150 Chi Chi's locations remaining and they would be forced to file for bankruptcy just a year later. Bankrupt. Following their bankruptcy filing, tragedy struck at one of their Pittsburgh locations, where a hepatitis A outbreak that was traced to a batch of onions killed four people and sickened over 650 others. Even with the double whammy of a bankruptcy and the horrific hepatitis A outbreak, Chi Chi's still continues to live on outside of North America. Unfortunately, more like a shadow of their former Tex-Mex glory with just a few locations in a select few countries throughout North Africa, Europe, and the Middle East. If Chi Chi's were still operating in the United States, how do you think they would stack up to the seemingly untouchable Mexican fast food? giants like Taco Bell and Chipotle. Crumbs Bake Shop Cupcakes up, everyone! Crumbs Bake Shop started off from very humble beginnings. Once a small mom-and-pop bake shop on the Upper West Side of Manhattan, they soon became much more than just a unique bakery. Offering 50 different types of diverse and mouth-watering cupcakes, Crumbs Bake Shop was able to expand to over 75 locations and became the largest cupcake chain in North America. With candy-coated cupcakes and unique flavors such as peanut butter cup and Cosmopolitan, Crumbs was able to achieve huge success and lead the cup cake food craze that had hit the U.S. at the time. What happened next for Crumbs was unfortunate and may have even been avoidable had the business been handled differently. Aggressive expansion of the brand when profits from existing stores were already stagnant caused a huge problem for the Crumbs group. Are we in trouble, Coppicer? After much struggle, Crumbs Bake Shop closed all locations in 2014 and filed for bankruptcy. Eventually, the brand was sold off to TV per personality Marcus Lamonis. Marcus did his best to bring the shuttered company back to life, but even the addition of a celebrity to the mix wasn't enough to revive Crumb's Bake Shop. They finally closed down all locations in 2017, and this time they would not get another chance to come back from the dead. Got a favorite you've seen disappear? Let us know! And tap or click another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell!